welcome back. I'm looking a little funky at the moment. This is going to be a video hopefully making some of my makeup fundamentals that I talk about or refer to on my channel all the time a little bit easier to find in one place. <laughs> and this is not one of those like good side, bad side, here's how to do your makeup because you're doing your makeup wrong kind of videos. Those don't tend to age well, do they? They usually hinge on makeup trends and I really want my videos to be about things that are applicable to everybody anytime that they would watch this and are more helpful than judgmental. I already did this, obviously I did this makeup look, but I already like filmed it and everything and I didn't try to do anything badly. I didn't like do it with my non-dominant hand to be like, ooh, I'm fudging this. You know what I mean? Like this isn't a clown show. I literally just put a lot of <laughs> a lot of different examples of things that I want to demonstrate like on my face all at once so that this can be our visual aid as we go. <laughs> and it's like if you're looking at the title of the video and you're like, why your makeup looks weird. Well, okay, okay, I can tell you why your makeup looks weird. <laughs> you're wearing two different eye looks. But yeah, all the visual aids are attempting to show three main principles of why you might get done with your makeup after either following a tutorial, getting a recommendation from somebody at Sephora, buying something that you thought was going to be one way, and getting done with it and going, is that working? Why does it look weird, you know? And it's not necessarily like weird, bad, it's just like it wasn't what you expected. And maybe how to manipulate a face of makeup once it's already on to make it work or to maybe keep you from buying things that weren't going to work for you in the first place, you know, save you a little bit of money. So hopefully this is incredibly helpful for you guys. That is that is the aim. And if you do enjoy this or find it valuable, please subscribe while you are here and hit the thumbs up down there to let me know. So yeah, guys, let's go ahead and jump in. The first reason that your makeup might look weird when you're done is mainly because you are not paying attention to the color theory of the things that are on your face. That does not mean necessarily your undertones. Yes, your undertones play into what looks good on you, what's easier for you to wear, what foundations, complexion products are going to match your skin, but more than anything, it's about context. So basically I have such an encyclopedic collection. I was able to mimic the looks on each side of my face with the exception of the complexion products with the exact same products, just in different colors. So like, on, for example, on my cheeks, I have two different M Cosmetics blushes on one side and two other M Cosmetics blushes on the other side. On this side of my eyes, I have the more cool toned James Molloy quad. And on this side, I have the more rosy James Molloy quad from Beauty Pie. So what we did here is I wanted to show y'all like, I don't think this looks bad, I don't. But if you get down and you're like, what's happening here? I focused like entirely on peachy tones on my complexion for this. So I started out with the HD foundation from Makeup Forever actually, because I was hunting through my collection and I don't have a ton of foundation. I don't keep a ton of foundations around that don't really work for me. And I was actually shocked, <laughs> you guys. I was shocked. I was expecting this to like go sideways so fast. And like, I was like, wait a second. The one day I need this foundation to look stupid like it usually does on me, it looks great. What? <laughs> like, it looks really good. And the actual shade works pretty well on me now that I have a tan, which <laughs> I just, I, I couldn't have predicted. But it is still a little bit peachy on me for my undertone. So I have a neutral leaning, slightly warm, and definitely more exaggeratedly warm undertone as the summer progresses, as I get a little bit of tan and a little bit of like pigmentation to my skin. And I leaned into that pretty hard with this. I went even like peacher and not even yellow, just more peach with that complexion product. And I focused on a really peach cheek look here. I went for the Rose Ink bronzer, which is quite orange for me. I used Magic Hour and Faded Clementine in the M Cosmetics Magic Hour, Magic Hour? M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow blushes. You know, it made everything look really at home, right? Like if you cover up the lips and you cover up the eyes, we're talking about something that you could easily believe was, you know, naturally occurring on me because it's all in the same family. I was thinking about the undertones of the products, the actual temperature of the products when I was combining them. But I decided to take a hard left when it came especially to the eyes. I wanted to go for something really cool toned. 
and it's not against the rules. It's just going to look a little bit funky. You're going to look at it and you're going to go, that doesn't, it makes my eye, that's not what I thought was going to happen. And I will say, this is an, this is an absolutely beautiful quad. I like it so much. You know, obviously these all are a little desaturated and you have this really, really bright silver and that's going to be, you know, that's going to be icy on most people. But I do still feel like these shades have enough neutrality in them that you can make them work if you contextualize them within a face of makeup that is a little bit kind of leaning towards the cool wintry tones if you think about it, or if you use those cool tones to create depth like I have, and then maybe, maybe if you wanna make it like sink better instead of looking so dissonant, which again, not a horrible, horrible thing. I like the way that it's making the, you know, my brown eyes pop, but it is just kind of looking, if you, if you do this, it just looks a little bit drama. You know what I mean? It's just very high contrast. You can make it belong a little bit better if you use either a little bit of your blush that you use. So here I have Faded Clementine, a little bit of this blush in the eye look. This has always been a trick that I have loved to do when I get done with a phase of makeup because, you know, it doesn't always go to plan, right? A lot of times I am combining makeup items for the first time on camera. Like, I'll like the formula, but I won't know what it's going to look like with all its friends until I get it on. And all of a sudden, you have something that looks like it belongs a little bit more, or and or you can kind of iterate, right, on the tone values that we have over here and bring an even more exaggerated version of this into the eye look that's going to help my eyes pop. So you're kind of using your own features as inspiration to bring yourself back to center, if that makes sense. Like when something is this kind of like a wide left, <laughs> As a silver is on me, I'm like, okay, what can I do to both bring this back to home base, which would be my natural complexion, but also make it look intentional. We're not just gonna like cover it up and start over. I want to make it look like, yes, I can wear these colors and I know the ways to do it. And the way to do that for me is to take something really bold gold, right? Like this one, this is the Hutopian Dream Palette from Pat McGrath. And this is one of her special shades. It's just this wild, warm, almost orange gold. And place that right on the lid because what you're going to do is use that warmth, that super warmth, and it's gonna make the eyelid pop. So I'm not gonna do it with that finger because I picked up way too much product, but I'll do it with like this one. You really don't need much at all. And it's gonna look more intentional just a little tiny bit to pull that warmth back in. And again, I didn't hate the look before, but I feel like that sells the garment a little bit better, right? Everything just looks that much more intentional. Now, something else that is disagreeing right now, I'm actually wearing the same color all across my lips, and that is Hourglass Provoke. Yes. Unreal lip gloss in the shade Provoke. So this is a notoriously lovely, mucky, beige, just densely pigmented, but super desaturated kind of beige purple on me, a lavin grayish, if you will. And on this side of my face, it's living within all of its other tones. And so it looks really pleasantly rose. But on this side of my face, it's kind of in contrast with everything, it almost looks bright pink. <laughs> I mean, not bright pink, not hot pink, but like it looks, it looks odd because this is orange. And then this looks super, super pink in contrast because of the lavender in it. Something that would look better here is something that's kind of in the same shade family because, you know, I still wanna stay in sort of a desaturated place. I don't want my lips to take over, but I have here the In Beauty Glaze Number no. 7 Lip Oil in Cookie, and Cookie is gonna be a really nice peach by comparison. Do you see just the subtlety of the difference in the undertone there? And this is going to read more at home because it's just got that little bit of peach in it. So we're talking about something that is just a subtle tweak of a knob, right? <laughs> in terms of temperature, but 
it is all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. I always forget that, <laughs> that In Beauty has a flavor. It's so nice. So now I have the In Beauty on one side and the gold on my eye, and suddenly we've got a look that looks like I meant to. And then this side is still looking, I mean, it's boring. It's boring because it's tonal. I mean, I think it's pretty, but it is boring. But this all looks very at home together, even with that lip gloss. So the big takeaway of this whole tip is when you get done with your makeup and stuff looks weird, come back to the fundamentals of color theory and examine not even necessarily the color that you put on because things change colors on our skin. It's more about saying like, okay, what have I what have I arrived at? What have I ended up with? And for me, it's like, okay, this looks very, very orange. Do I want to cover that up and tone that down with something? Or do I want to just like chase the feeling? And especially if it like goes with the outfit that you're wearing or something, like you want it to be this very like sunshiny bright thing and pretend that these are the undertones that look good on your skin kind of thing and like really push the envelope in that direction because we can. You don't have to be stuck in this box of like exactly what your undertones dictate. It's more about making things look intentional and making them look at home. And it actually gives you freedom to make a lot of things work for you. But to return to that fundamental of like looking at like just, you know, take take a step back. This is what artists do, right? And we try and be really, really objective about the colors that we're seeing and the shapes that we're seeing. It's not so much about like, that's a face, that's a contour. This is what I did on my eye. It's like, that's a color. That's a plane of color right there. I'm going to identify that color and why it sticks out to me is dissonant. And then you can make decisions from there as to whether you want to chase the dissonance, whether you want to tone down the dissonance, or whether you're okay with the dissonance. But it's more about like being able to recognize what looks weird to you and then being able to actually diagnose it and remedy it in one way or another, like balance it back out. Or you can play it really, really safe. Like I did on this side, this is just safe. Safe, safe, safe. The second reason that your makeup might look weird is because you are not keeping your skin type in mind. And that changes a lot, actually. Like it's not a totally fixed thing. And that's why I think a lot of us can get kind of caught up in it and be like, this foundation worked for me for a while, but it ended up looking bad on me after a while. We blame the foundation. When what can happen is, for me, if I wear the Fenty Ease Drop too many days in a row, my skin starts to get really thirsty because it is a more satin matte formula. And so my skin starts to dry out over time. As I'm wearing the same foundation with drier and drier and drier skin, my skin is not getting what it needs and it's gonna start looking like the foundation is performing more poorly. So it's not just about keeping in mind the types of foundations that are meant for your skin because I think that anybody can get a look that they want. But I do think a lot of times we try to solve something to the point that we end up being disappointed in a product because it doesn't do the exact same thing every single day. And it's because our skin is not doing the exact same thing every day. We could be traveling, we could be sleeping less, we could be drinking more, we could be exercising more. We've got hormones, we've got weather. Weather is an enormous factor in this. Season changes, things like that. And sometimes it's just a matter of changing your skin prep or changing the powder that you're using or changing the finishing spray that you're using. I did end up picking up the Tula skin tint. We'll be talking about that at some point, but I also, because I can't help myself, I always want to just go ahead and like, eh, hey, well, if I'm making an order, you know, I picked up their skin mist and it is so glycerin-y and dewy. It's so awesome. But this is a really nice thing to have in my repertoire because sometimes a foundation I'll get all the way done and it's like I've gone one too many days wearing the Fenty Ease drop in a row and I need some help. I need it to be blurred. I need some hydration after the fact. And there are things that can be doctored after the fact to make your makeup look less weird because it's not your fault and we shouldn't have to own 10,000 <laughs> foundations like I do. You can manipulate them after the fact or you know before you put them on or whatever to make it work better for you. But it is about the day to day of just taking five, 10 seconds and kind of asking your skin how she's feeling, you know? Like, just look at yourself in the mirror, be like, how are we doing today? Is my face feeling a little tight? Am I feeling a little bit oily? There are also, I don't know, things that we get in our heads sometimes where we will watch creators who 
aren't like us and they will love a product or love a technique and we will use it and we will be very confused as to why it doesn't work for us. I saw so many people do the whole like, this is so stupid, I'm debunking this technique, trying Jackie Ina's technique of powdering her primer before she put on her foundation. Jackie Ina has oily skin, okay? And she likes a mochi skin natural matte satin perfected finish. If you got skin like me and you put on a primer and then you powder it with powder before you put on your full coverage matte foundation, I'm telling you, you're not gonna look like Jackie Ina in more ways than one, <laughs> okay? And a lot of times we do end up wanting to look a certain way and so we buy the certain products from a certain creator, not bearing in mind what the starting point was for the creator versus what our starting point is as far as our skin type is concerned and what the needs of our skin are on a day-to-day -day basis. So that is a huge thing to keep in mind is just kind of doing a diagnostic and also as you're putting your makeup on, as you're choosing what you're gonna do that day, bear in mind what you just did in terms of your skincare. Like if I put on the Glossier After Bomb, like girl, I am not going to be putting on like an oil primer. <laughs> Things are gonna get weird fast. But it is also really freeing to know sometimes that some products just aren't meant for us. That's why I have the job that I have. That's why I enjoy doing what I do is because I have gotten the feedback from so many people that me showing what works for me and what doesn't work for me, sometimes what doesn't work for me works for a lot of people for the exact reason that it doesn't work for me and vice versa. And equipped with that knowledge, you can can then go forth with a much more laser focused idea of what you're looking for and what to expect once you get it in your hands too. And also bear in mind that it might not take what you think it takes to get where you're going. Okay, let me, let me elaborate. If you are someone who has naturally dry skin, but you want a matte finish. Like you don't want somebody telling you, oh, you have to have dewy skin just because your skin is thirsty. And you know, not necessarily, maybe you want a matte finish on your skin. It just might not require you buying the same foundation that a, an oily skinned person might wear to have matte skin. It's probably gonna over dry your skin. So you can buy something that is medium in terms of its mattification, something that's just like a natural finish, and then use a nice HD setting powder or just something that's going to be blurring and you'll end up with the same satin finish that they get from Fenty Pro Filter, you know? So today I used the Beauty Bakery Flower on this side and you can see it gave me this really like satin matte complexion versus this side which I used the Kosas on and a really, really dewy setting mist and this is much less likely to dry out on me because it's just a matte powder than if I were to go matte, 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 matte. Like you don't need an oil absorbing mattifying primer and a matte foundation and a matte concealer and a matte powder to achieve a matte complexion if you have dry skin. It can just be one step in your routine that's just the finishing touch kind of thing. And as far as oily skin folks, you don't necessarily need to wear dewy, dewy, dewy everything that's going to slip all over your face and perform poorly to have a dewy looking complexion at the end. You can just finish it with a really nice dewy setting mist. You can use the MAC Fix Plus or the Fix Plus Magic Radiance, or like I said, this Tula, which is dynamite, signature glow refreshing and brightening face mist. And it's going to have that glycerin in it that all it really does is just kind of smooth the top of the skin and melt it together. It's not necessarily adding emollients all the way down through the makeup to, you know, underneath your makeup to your skin. It's just like a, you know, a one step, it changing the finish of the makeup, not necessarily changing you know, the actual consistency of everything. So that's a tip to really consider all the way from the consideration of buying process all the way through to like your last steps of your makeup routine. I had to change my battery and I hit my head. <laughs> so, my hair looks a little crazy. I don't know if it really did anything, but maybe a little bit. Anyway, all right, the third and final reason that your makeup might look weird when you're done is just because you haven't mastered the like shapes of your features. And this is a lifelong learning process, but there are a lot of really, really great tutorials from very intelligent people on the internet that I have learned a lot from. My favorite ones are like the old classic ones from Wayne Goss. I learned so much about like why when I tried to do looks that I saw on Tati or Jackie Ina 
or Raw Beauty Christie. They weren't working on me and that's just specifically because of my eyes. I have very small eyelids and a lot of area right here. So people whose eye shapes are a little bit more like mine is like, Kelly Gooch or even Nikki Tutorials, you know, like small eyelid space and more real estate here to work with. And so a lot of times we will see something, get passionately excited about it, try to mimic it because we saw it on somebody else and it won't please us as much. And it's because our features aren't the same and we're all beautifully unique. And again, I don't want to make this about doing your makeup right or doing your makeup wrong. This is very subjective. And for that reason, I didn't demonstrate it. I didn't want to, again, Again, use my non-dominant hand and like make my makeup look stupid on purpose. Like, oh, you're dumb if you do this. No, <laughs> no. For me, it's about experimentation. It's about playing and it's about taking, again, that artist's view, stepping back from your reflection and going, if I could draw a line somewhere, where would I draw a line? Not necessarily changing your features one way or the other, but just doing what you're setting out to do getting the look that you have in your head, like translating it from your head to reality. <laughs> and when I say it's a lifelong process, it's because you're always getting to know your own face and your own face is always changing with time. And so are your tastes. So for me, it was understanding, and you guys hear me talk about this all the time. I recognize that unlike some other people that I watch, I have quite a lot of real estate between the bottom of my eye and kind of the top of my cheek. I have very small eyes and they, they tend to be a little bit like squinty. And so I think that I kind of subconsciously like try and hold them really open. And when I do, I kind of drop my cheeks down. This is so detailed and so nitpicky, but it's because I watch myself on camera all the time. And I also like examine people's features a lot watching other channels because I want to understand, you know, how they do their makeup if I like it. I, even watching TV shows, I, man, I mainly watch the Kardashians just to see because their makeup's so exaggerated. I'm like, ooh, okay, what did Mario do here? <laughs> like want to see how they made all of the things work together and he you can really really see it on them because her like a lot of Kim Kardashian's looks are really really structured all of theirs are and it's all in matte and so it's like very easy to see all the lines and stuff so regardless I'm always studying these things and I have noticed you know like I said I have more real estate here so I can bring my blush up a little bit more or I can really play with eyeshadow underneath my eye more than I might see on some other people but that since my eyes are kind of squinty, if I put mascara on my lower lash line, it actually makes my eyes look smaller and it covers up a lot of the, you know, any work that I've done on my lids. And it tends to just look very like made up on me. There's just not really enough room for that because my eyes are so close set, as close set, well they are, but deep set. And that's not necessarily a rule I'm going to live by for the rest of my life. That's just how I feel right now. A lot of people also comment, uh, especially if they're watching me do my makeup for the first time, they'll say, why don't you line your cube? Cupid's bow. I don't line my Cupid's bow when I do lip liner because I think a lot of people look really beautiful with their Cupid's bows accentuated, but for me, I feel like it just looks really stark on me for some reason, and I love having it just sort of be softer and make my lips look a little bit rounder because I do have really angular features. I just don't want to add more angles, I guess, and so I just don't, but it's just my taste, you know? It's just something that I have grown to understand doing my makeup and playing. And I think a lot of times we, especially watching people making videos that are all about rules and fundamentals, we can sometimes get boxed in thinking, I have to do my makeup a certain way because that's the right way and these are the rules. And I, I really wanna encourage anybody, like if you take anything away from this video, it's to play. Play, 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 play. It's just makeup and it's your gorgeous, beautiful face that you're putting it on. It's not about fixing you. It's not about looking like somebody else. It is literally about using it as, and using all of these things as tools for self-love and self-care. Putting on makeup is self-care for me. It's so relaxing and creative and you have to, in order to make it that for you, you have to release yourself from what can sometimes feel like very imposing forces of what you're supposed to want what you're supposed to want to look like. And what I really want to do is equip people on my channel with the tools and also the confidence to keep playing and keep trying. And again, the main goal is to be able to take what you're seeing in your head 
use your imagination, feel free to use your imagination, and then express that on your face. And that's why I love when makeup, certain makeup formulas and colors and creators of makeup brands and things like that make me think differently about what makeup can do and how I can play with it. That's the ultimate inspiration to me and that's like what keeps me coming back to it is, you know, changing textures, changing styles and not necessarily like a brand new way of fixing what's broken. It's more about more and more paints in my toolbox to be able to like play and accomplish what you're what you set out to do and like surprise yourself in a good way. So I just wanted to offer you guys three tips of kind of a place to come back to. Here are some examples of the things that I think about on a daily basis as I'm trying new looks almost every single day. And some of the things that feel like moving parts, some of the things that feel like constants, and what's going through my head at any given time trying to take both a, a critical eye to formulas, but also an artistic eye trying to evolve the way that I think about makeup. So guys, if you enjoyed this kind of video, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. I know a lot of people ask me for color theory oriented videos, and I am not necessarily an expert yet in any of the systems, like the season systems and things like that. So this is the way that I think about these things so far, but I hope that this was at least satisfying for some people who were hoping to hear it the way that I think about it. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel and you are not yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!